Welcome back to Inside Boxing Throwdown. This is our third segment where we talk about open topic. I'm Aurelio Martinez, Stephen Johnson. Now, Stephen, and this is the, this is open topic. We're going to talk about uh, current affairs and things that are coming. Uh, of course, we got some good fights next week uh, uh, on tap. Well, let, let me then, talk about the fights next week. Okay, go ahead. Down go ahead. Stuff. Uh, <clears throat> next week, first of all, on HBO, we have main events, which is you know, it's Kathy Duva. Um, at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, New mm -hmm. Jersey. Mm -hmm. We got Sergey Kovalov. Sergey, the crusher. I like Sergey. Kovalov yeah. taking on Elita Alvarez for the WBO World Light Heavyweight title. Then Dimitri Bivol versus Isaac Chalemba for the WBA World Light Heavyweight title. Two really, what should be really good fights. Um, the crusher is still trying to get people to fight him. Nobody really wants to fight him, you know. And then, But then Isaac Chalemba, I'm, I'm expecting him to beat... Dimitri Bivo. Well, let me back up. I'm expecting the Crusher to take care of Elia Alvarez, take care of him, then Chalemba to take care of Bivo, which will be for uh, set up a nice unification, light heavyweight between the WBO and WBA champions. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, the Crusher, you know, as you know, um, things have been a little bit crazy for him ever since you know he, he lost those back-to-back -back fights to Andre Ward. Yep. And then Andre Ward retired. Okay, so Crusher's been, uh, there's still detractors of the Crusher saying that um, he can't do this and he can't do that. But the bottom line is what he couldn't do is he couldn't take care of Andre Ward. Yeah. And that's really no notch on uh, a knock against anyone because nobody could deal with Andre Ward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was the biggest, I admit it, you know, I said it publicly many times. I didn't think that Andre Ward could handle him. Yeah. And then Andre beat him the first time. And then you remember I thought, ah, the second time it ain't going to happen. He came back and actually stopped him the second time. So that kind of changed things around. But the light heavyweight title is there for grabs. Um, next week we'll get That's to see that. That's next week, HBO, right? HBO. Okay. Okay. Then on Fox Sports at the Nassau Coliseum in New York, Luda Bella has a fight card where he's going to feature some old guys, uh, uh, Devin Alexander and Andre Berto, Luis Colazzo versus Brian Perella, Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen versus Jaleon Love. And Sergey Lipnitz versus Eric Bone with Marcus Brown versus Lennis Castillo. A nice little card of guys that we know are really not. Yeah, they're, they're just. They're, they're, but it's a good fight card. They're exciting. They're It'll exciting. Be an fight. Interesting fights for everybody to I'm, see. I'm, I'm extremely uh, interested in, in Lipnitz, okay? Yeah. Because I've got my eye on him in the radar for uh, for Misaya Lopez. Really? Yeah, I do. I really do. I, 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 he's, he's, on my, he's, he's on my radar. Okay. So, okay, so, he's on your radar. Well, yeah. let's talk. Real briefly about your boy Misael Lopez. Yeah. I know he's got a big fight coming up. Um, go ahead and talk about that fight. But you know, he, this is a very good fight, and this is this is this is about the young youngsters that are coming up, that are that are making a bold move into get the, get that recognition that they deserve. It, for years and years, it's it, it, it forever. It's been if you're not signed and you're not on HBO or ESPN or Showtime, nobody else in the world know, knows anything about you. But now you got to. Bunch of young guys that are coming out and very talented in their career. You got uh, uh, Teofimo, you got Lopez, uh, yeah. Gomez, you got uh, uh, all these, all these up and Michael Dutch over, uh, Dutch over. You got Dutch over. You got uh, uh, all day. Uh, I mean, th th these are people that uh, out there you really don't know about because they don't get the the, the exposure. But trust me, these are highly talented. And then you got Misael Lopez. He's eight and zero. He's going to fight. Uh, James Wilkins from from Staten Island, New York. Mm -hmm. Okay, on September sixteenth, mm -hmm. both are undefeated, eight and zero and five and zero, and both highly talented. Okay, as a matter of fact, Wilkins is is aligned with uh, Roy Jones Jr. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we got these two guys that are taking that bold step and saying, "Hey, I'm going to show the world that I can that I can that I can that I can compete." So this is going to be a great fight of two fighters that want to advance. And, and and will advance regardless. They will advance because they're they're that highly talented, and the world is going to know about this. As a matter of fact, this is actually going to be streamed live on IBTV, available on Roku. It's going to be produced, so people are going to get a chance to see some of these guys, and they can start matching them up and comparing with your Tito Filo and your All Days and, and Michael Dutchovers. Because man, I'm telling you, I'm really getting excited. I think I think the next year is going to bring this out. Thanks to the streaming and the live. So September 16th, we'll come back and talk about that fight, and, and, and everyone will have had a chance to see that fight. Well, I actually had the chance to interview uh, James Wilkins. Um, James, 
what do you call this? Uh, uh, crunch, crunch time. Crunch time. James Crunch <clears throat> Time Wilkins. Um, he's five and zero with five KOs. Like the radio said, he's, highly uh, decorated. He's right there with uh, Roy Jones. Is in his in. Um, he, 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 they have no problem saying Roy, jo Roy Jones likes the kid a lot. He's in his corner for his last two fights. Um, this is really going to be a good fight. Really going to be a good fight held right here in Denver, Colorado. Um, I think one of the biggest things is that, like you <clears> said, these are two guys that both of them have uh, uh, visions of what they want to do. Um, in the case of Misael, you've had a, a tough time finding opponents for him. Yeah. Um, James Wilkins has expressed to me that he's no opponent. He's coming in here. You can go to sj, sj.insideboxing.com and read my interview with James Crunch Time Wilkins, yes. and you can see exactly what he had to say about what's going to happen when he comes to Denver. And that, just automatically on that, we had a really influx of fans wanting to know how they could get tickets. Oh, yeah. Because they want to see yeah. this. James Crunch Time, like I said, 5 and 0 with 5 KOs, highly deca decorated amateur. Highly decorated. Um, the advantage he had over at Misael Lopez is well documented that Misael was undocumented here in, 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 in the United States so that he couldn't advance any farther than state competition. They wouldn't allow him to advance. And so he, yeah. he couldn't go to national, um, regional or national competition. James was able to do that. James Wilkins actually fought in China, fought in Ireland. He's highly decorated. This is going to be a great fight, folks. It is. It is. Now, now, now back to open topic. Yeah. Uh, let me just, let me just uh, tell you, did you see... Now, are, are we going to see Andre Ward back in the ring? No. Are we? No. I'm telling you, are we going to see him back in the ring? No. Okay. Andre Ward put out some photos, <laughs> recent photos of him in the gym sparring, and he had this to say, I miss boxing. I miss yeah, everybody. boxing. Floyd says that. <laughs> no, Floyd, Floyd says it Floyd, too. Floyd, Floyd says it. What do you mean Floyd's no? Floyd's all about money. It, it doesn't matter. Floyd Andre never said he missed on. boxing. Yes, he did. No. Yes, he, he did. He, he said, did. I miss it. I mean, he's, he works out every day. He misses part of his big, life. That's that's he's his, Mr. Big Boss. That's his lifestyle. That's Andre Ward. Yeah. Andre Ward too. He's yeah. not gonna fight anybody yeah. for peanuts. Yeah. I guarantee you. No, but he he's not. But he don't have to fight anyone for peanuts. What do you mean? He can come back into the scene and get paid big money. No, 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 no. Andre Ward. No. Yeah. Not not money like we're talking about, like Floyd. Floyd's talking about. Well, he no one, no one's gonna get Floyd money. Well, no then, then no why would Andre Ward Nobody. come back to make two or three well, million dollars? See, 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 we don't have that money, so we can't we can't di uh, differentiate, you know, twenty million dollars and one million dollars, okay? Because we've never had that. But let me tell you, one million dollars is a lot of money. Andre and if you don't, Ward, if you don't, if you don't dollars. believe it, put it in my bank account. Andre Ward okay? <laughs> fighting for a million dollars. Andre Ward no. makes a million dollars. Andre, Andre Ward, analyst. he can come back and make five million dollars easy on a fight, no matter who we fight against Crusher. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anybody else? So what I'm saying is, guys, fight. don't be surprised. Andre Ward is getting that itch. He knows he can beat. Let me tell you right uh, now. He knows he can beat all the all the uh, 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 light, light heavyweights out there. There's, he there's only the crusher. Okay. There's only the okay. crusher. The rest of these okay. guys don't, aren't interesting to him. And Andre Ward will not be coming back to fight anytime. <laughs> you know, he he's living a good life. Just like you know, he's not Roy Jones. You know, Roy Jones is still hasn't retired because he still has that. Fire burning that if somebody calls his name out, they'll fight him. That's not Andre Ward. Andre okay, Ward anyway, making good money. Real quick, on open topic, because we're running out of time. Uh, let's go back to your Katie. I think that's going to be a good Katie thing. Taylor. Let me tell you. How about this? How about this being Katie Taylor's plan? Okay. She goes to Chicago. You go to Chicago, beat the heck out of... Little sister. Little sister, Serrano. Okay, because we know Amanda's the one with, with, the, with the championship bouts and the high, you know, the, 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 the talented of the both. But could the plan be Katie Taylor? Because Katie Taylor's top top shout. I mean, she's no joke. Okay, she goes to Chicago, beats the heck out of uh, Amanda, and she is okay without a doubt. She's gonna win that fight. She's gonna win it handily and easily. Okay, she's gonna beat him up. So you get big sister Amanda fired up. Now Katie Taylor go back home, and she says, okay, well if you want to avenge your sister's your sister's uh, uh, loss. loss, come on, bring hand delivered in bouts to me. Okay. I'm just thinking out loud. Could that be a plan? Oh, I don't think there's any question that's <laughs> what the plan is. I mean, you know, because Amanda's been calling out Katie Taylor. Yeah. And Katie's like, nah, I'm not interested in that right now because Katie, you know, she says, I'm building up my own thing. But then, you know, I guess then Cindy started saying stuff and she says, well, I'll tell you what. I'll come over there and knock off your little sister, beat her handily, 
and then go back to Ireland, and you have to come over here to Ireland. <laughs> and, and, if, and if Amanda, I don't think Amanda's afraid of that. Amanda will go over there and fight her, but man, what a fight that'll be. Oh, man. You know, what a fight that'll you know, be. And, and, and Irish folks out there, they're like the Mexican folks, you know, they, they don't mess with their, their boxing. Oh man, that I, I'm just just a thought, just a thought, guys. But anyway, a good thought. A but good anyway, thought. that's what I think. That's what the plan is. I don't think that's, that wasn't revelation to anybody. I think almost everybody realized that's what's going to go on. Uh-huh. You know, but it it, it 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 comes up for some real good things. And that fight, don't remember, we talked about that a while ago. That'll be October the sixth in Chicago. That's a fight that mm-hmm. we'll continue to mention because the build up for it. It's going to be probably one of the biggest ones of the, in 2018 for women's boxing. Hey, and your boy here is going to watch that. You, know, you I, are. I, I don't watch women's boxing. Wait a minute. You're going to watch it? I'm going to watch it. Damn. I'm going to watch it. You heard it. I'm going to watch it. Okay. He's going to watch okay. that fight. <laughs> hey, folks. That's the end of our third and final segment for this week uh-huh. of Inside Boxing's Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson, co-host of Ray Martinez. We'll see you next week. And as we end every episode of Inside Boxing's Throwdown, keep your hands up.